Hi everyone, uh, today I want to show you a project I've been working on for quite a while. Uh, this is an old slide projector. I'm not exactly sure what decade this thing is from, uh, but it now runs RetroPie. It's, uh, I've turned this into a games console. Uh, it projects the games onto the wall as you're playing them. So inside here there's a 4,500 lumen LED. Uh, there's a Pi 3B Plus which is running the show. There's an audio amplifier in here. Uh, the Pi 3B is, is driving an SPI screen just here at 60 frames a second. Uh, and all of this is controlled with uh, a standard wireless controller, or games controller like this. So let's take this apart uh, and I'll show you all how it goes together, how it works, and uh, we'll play some games. First, let's have a quick overview of how this is all put together. So the main components you've got here are the LCD, uh, the LED assembly. Uh, this is the main board, which contains most of the electronics. And this stage here just acts to distribute the power between those sections. So you have a DC input jack at the back here. Uh, it's powered by a laptop charger, which outputs 19 volts at about 3.4 amps. It goes through the main switch here. And then the power goes into these two Molex connectors. And these connectors distribute the power um, either up to the LED module or down to the main board. Let's start with the um, LED module here. Uh, originally, the projector contained this 300 watt uh, incandescent bulb. Uh, it was pretty bright, but unfortunately it was definitely the wrong color temperature. And it also got very, very hot. It needed a very noisy AC fan below it uh, to keep everything cool. So I had to remove this and the fan that it came with in order to fit the rest of the electronics into the enclosure. Uh, I replaced it with a 30 watt LED from LumiLEDs. If you look into the lens there, you can see it just there. Uh, this has a, a color temperature of uh, 5700K. Now I went for this particular LED because uh, mm -hmm. it has a very high overall brightness, it's, uh, 4,500 lumens, I believe, but it's also got a very high efficiency. It's about 145 lumens per watt. Now in this kind of instance, that's really important uh, because the higher the lumens, the watt, the less heat it will generate. Uh, for a given brightness and so the smaller the fan can actually be. If you look down the top there you can see the LED is attached to a um, old uh, heatsink from an old CPU and there's some thermal paste on there as well. Hold that right up and if you can see inside there just about you can see the LED there that's been uh, thermal pasted on. The LED itself consumes a 900 milliamps at a nominal voltage of 35 volts so in order to drive it properly I'm using uh, this step up constant current supply I found on eBay. It steps up the 19 volts from the power supply to 35 volts uh, and it limits the current to 900 milliamps. Uh, it does seem to get pretty warm, uh, I presume that's normal. Um, so what I've done is I've screwed it down to this uh, metal heat sink just here to try and dissipate the heat a little bit more. You can see the potentiometers on the back there for, uh, for voltage and current. And um, I'll put a link to this power supply and the LED itself uh, in the description below. The main board here is where most of the magic happens. Uh, it was definitely, as you can see, a bit of a challenge to fit everything in here. So the power from the laptop supply comes into this Molex connector and is fed straight away to this buck converter. And this knocks the 19 volts down from the power supply, it knocks it down to five volts DC. Uh, this buck converter should be able to handle three amps. Uh, in practice, I've never had any issues uh, with power for the Raspberry Pi. The five volts from there then heads off in two different directions. Uh, one set heads off to this 80 millimeter Noctua 5 volt fan just here, and the other part comes off through the USB cable uh, to the Pi itself. Now the Pi is a Model 3B Plus, which is more than adequate uh, for classic console emulation and RetroPie. You can see there's no heat sinks on this, um, but in practice I've never seen temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius on either the GPU or the CPU while it's in operation. These two USB receivers are for the gamepads, Again, I was initially worried that they wouldn't work very well through the metal case, uh, but so far I've had no issues with them at all. Audio comes out through the 3.5mm jack and goes straight into this uh, ground loop isolator just here. Uh, I found the amplifier was actually picking up a lot of noise from various power supplies in here, so this was necessary to cut out that noise. Uh, speaking of the amplifier, it's actually buried below the USB ports just here. You can see down there. 
and uh, this is a PAM8403 uh, 3 watts per channel stereo amplifier uh, it runs from 5 volts now initially I had it running directly from this buck converter but there seemed to be an awful lot of noise on the on the supply this is not a particularly quiet supply so what I did instead is you can see these black and white wires just here and they're actually drawing the 5 volts off the Pi just here instead of the two pins now I found that was much much quieter supply much smoother uh, we ended up getting a, a much quieter noise from the, the amplifier uh, it seems like maybe there's some more filtering going on on the on the pie board itself i haven't really investigated to find out why that's the case this yellow and orange wire just here is the output from the amplifier um, to go to a speaker at some point i'd like to add an internal speaker to this but i haven't yet found one that fits in the case properly um, so at the moment i'm just running this out of the case and plugging it into an external speaker the LCD is actually connected on top here uh, using this custom connector that I designed and ordered from JLPCB. I can take this off. Uh, it's set up in such a way as to enable the LCD that I'm using. Uh, I'm using four wire SPI mode. So the pins I need here are 3.3 volts, ground, SDA, which is data, SCL, which is the clock, DC, which is a uh, data command, uh, CS, chip select, and reset. Um, however, on this particular LCD, there's a bunch of other pins that have to be connected to either VCC or ground to set the controller up in the right mode. And this is all done in the connector just here. Um, soldering these 50 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch connectors by hand uh, was actually easier than I thought it would be. Um, I just covered it in flux, uh, drag soldered along the back of it, and then used desoldering braid to clean it up afterwards. Now, finding a screen that worked with this optical setup uh, was by far the most uh, complicated part of this build. Uh, I knew the resolution had to be as high as possible, uh, but realistically, 320 by 240 was the best I was going to find. It had to have a diagonal size of 2 inches, because that's what fits inside the, uh, the slide projector. Uh, and it also had to run using the FPCP ILI 9341 library, uh, which I've linked below. Um, if you want to see a bit of how that works, have a look at that video, but just note that the screen I've actually featured in that video is, is not the one I ended up using. So each of the screens had to be carefully disassembled until just the glass part remained. So when you buy a, a screen like a module like this from eBay or AliExpress, you usually end up with something that looks like this. Uh, this then needs to be taken apart carefully. This is not the same screen, but you get the idea, uh, until you're just left with the, uh, the glass part. So there, you can see the, the connector on the bottom as well. Now, this is a, a number of screens that I actually tried. Uh, the very first one I used was this one from Adafruit, and this is a uh, 320 by 240. Uh, sorry, this is a 240 by 240 resolution display, uh, and it's only 1.5 inches diagonally. Um, it actually worked really, really well. It was nice and bright. It worked without too much effort. Um, unfortunately, it's only because the resolution is only 240 by 240 and the aspect ratio on most old consoles is four to three. It means I was actually only getting about 240 to 180 pixels, which is not really good enough. I then stepped it up a little bit and tried this Adafruit screen just here. And uh, this screen is, in theory, it's the right size. It's 320 by 240, it's two inches. Problem is I was getting some weird optical effects, um, sort of black lines through the projected image. Uh, this red display down here was similar again it's the right size right resolution but I was getting these black lines throughout the uh, throughout the picture the screen I ended up using was this one from buydisplay.com and um, I'll put a link in the description as well to this uh, this didn't seem to to show those weird optical effects that the other ones had um, it could also buy it without the driver board as well which is why I had to create my own little uh, little board to, to make this work uh, it's not particularly expensive I think it cost about eight pounds something along those lines the next issue with these LCDs was actually heat. So LCDs generally don't like being too hot. Uh, and in my setup, there's no obvious way to cool these. If the screen was dark, uh, so in other words, if it was supposed to be a black screen, most of the light was actually being absorbed by the screen itself. And within a couple of minutes, it would overheat and it would do very strange things. The middle would start to fade out and eventually the whole display would stop working. The solution to this was actually to remove the polarizer from the back of the screen very, very carefully using a craft knife. I think the polarizer is still attached on this one. You won't be able to see on the camera there, but there's um, a very fine line around the edge there. I don't know if we can see that. 
uh, where the polarizer is still attached to the back of this. Now taking this off is very difficult. Um, I did it using a craft knife. It's very hard to do without breaking the screen. Uh, but then once it was off, I cut out a piece of polarizing film. Now this film here is actually a, a slightly broken piece that I made originally. And then this polarizer piece was placed behind the screen so that the most of the heat was absorbed into this plastic and not into the screen itself. Um, so this is a slightly broken one that I made earlier, but the, the one that's currently in there is actually sat just there. So you can see I've sort of sandwiched it between this metal frame and the, the metal of the um, projector behind there. And this polarizer um, acts to polarize the light before it reaches the screen. So most of the heat gets absorbed inside this polarizer. It's important to note that uh, most screens that I got seem to be polarized horizontally, as in straight up and straight across. However, uh, this screen I actually ended up using seemed to have ended up being polarized at 45 degrees, uh, which is why I had to change this polarizer out. I had to cut another piece of polarizer at 45 degrees to make sure that I could actually use this screen. So once I decided what screen to use, I made this little piece out of uh, foam board. You can see the screen in it just there. Here it is at the back. And you can see the connector. It just goes through a sort of extension socket here, with two 50 pin connectors on it. And basically, the light comes out through here from inside, so where the LCD, the LED, sorry, normally is. It goes through the polarizer just here. Uh, and then this actually sits around here, pretty close to the polarizer. And then the light comes out through the screen and projects onto the wall. This actually slides into the original slide holder. So I'll get this the right around. And it slides in like this. Try and get that in the middle. Uh, and then this whole slide holder actually slides on to the front of the projector like that. Uh, and then finally, just to finish it off, we can screw our lens back in and, uh, and hopefully it all works. So now you've seen how that's put together. Uh, let's plug it all in, set it up, and uh, let's play some games. Thanks very much for watching and if you have any questions or comments please leave them below. See you next time.